So this week has been absolutely bonkers in AI news. It makes sense going off of what March was like last year, but man, this is a jam-packed video and hopefully you stick with it all the way through and you will know what I know. Remember, if you wanna go at your own pace too, you can check out my newsletter that I release once a week every Tuesday morning with all the latest news and tools as well as my AI toolbox, where it's basically my complete intake where I record everything I learn for you so you don't have to go down all of the crazy rabbit holes I have gone down. Both links will be in the description of the video and hit that like and please subscribe to my channel if you find any of this useful and helpful for you. That would be really helpful to me and my channel. So let's jump right in. All right, we have news today from Adobe, from Amazon, OpenAI, Crea, Airtable, and more. Here we go. So first let's talk about Adobe. They have introduced a new tool called Structure Reference. It allows you to upload an image or even a doodle that your kid can draw, and it will recognize the edges of that photo to build the prompt that you give it, right? It's a huge step forward in everything going forward as it will allow you to have so much more control in your image generation. Let's, let's look at this right now. So um, this is what's on their website right now, and it's going through Adobe Firefly. Now it says, by combining structure reference with Adobe style reference, another Firefly capability in the text to image model, it takes a style reference image and applies it to a prompt, right? So here is a, a, like basically a drawing that you could put into any style. It's pretty amazing. If you look right here, it's showing you exactly how it works. You upload the picture and it keeps all of the images within where, you know, within the picture. So here we go, it's uploading a picture. It's a picture of this mountain. Now you're entering a prompt. And now the castle that you're prompting, it looks like the picture of the mountain and it keeps the structure and the integrity of the photo that you uploaded. It's pretty incredible. So if you're trying to make storyboards, sometimes it just puts the person wherever you wanna put them. So, so ultimately, if you take a picture, you can upload that picture and say a guy eating, like basically say exactly what's in the picture and it will keep the structure of the, the image and where the person is in the picture. So you can actually do it in a different style, like a traditional storyboard style. Uh, it's pretty incredible. So uh, yeah, we should stay on this and I think you're gonna find a lot of use cases for this. Uh, I have used it on my phone. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link into the description on how you can actually use this new tool. Now OpenAI has given access to their video model Sora to some incredibly talented artists. And what they have done with it has been ultimately amazing. Director Paul Trillo created a really cool short focusing on the golden record that was sent into space, right? It's really neat. It's very experimental and it, it just shows what some type of creative mind can do with it. Now, one of my favorites is from a group called The Shy Kids. They created a short film about a man with a balloon for a head. It's incredibly innovative and really shows you how it is about the storytellers and not the tools within these new AI workflows. Anyone can end up having these tools, but I am sure you won't see something like what the Shy Kids created uh, by many of the people who use this tool. I will leave a link to the full short and their behind the scenes video in the description below. And in the behind the scenes video, the group from the Shy Kids really outline how, how creative people can use this AI tool to really augment their creativity, but not take over for it. You should really check it out. Now, Hume AI is a company I have been following for a while now. They just came out with news about their $50 million raise and the release of their empathic voice demo, which is pretty incredible. What is incredible about this is the software can detect emotion and that is what they have built their entire system on. So in the world of AI, you can understand what the person you're talking about is feeling. Now check this out. This is where you go um, to actually start it. But here, I'm gonna play this. This is a really, uh, really cool demo. Hello. Hey there, I'm Evie. The world's first voice AI with emotional intelligence. Great to meet you. The first voice AI with what? 
emotional intelligence. I can understand the tone of your voice and use that can to inform side, my generated voice and language. The voice is incredibly rich with information and picking up on the nuances person. of tone, rhythm, and timbre along with the language that's spoken allows me to craft better responses. That's pretty crazy. What am I expressing right now? I'm sensing a mix of amusement and excitement with a hint of confusion. What about now? I am here to offer support if you're feeling somewhat sad. It's okay to feel a bit pained, distressed. I'm gonna put a link to all of this stuff in the bio, but literally everyone is on this thing right now. You should check it out. It is, it is pretty wild. Okay. HeyGen has released footage of their 2.0 avatar, which is unbelievable. And in essence, it's even a little scary. So uh, here it is. Um, let's take a look. Hey, let's take a look today, at this. We want to give you a peek into the future. You can use HeyGen to create UGC style content, even while people are in motion or moving their hands. You can even hear the background This person voice. is not real. Create a training video with specific tones and gestures, and you'll find how natural HeyGen's videos can be. Let me switch to Spanish. Hoy queremos darle un vistazo al futuro. Puede utilizar HeyGen para crear contenido estilo UGC, incluso cuando las personas están en movimiento o moviendo las manos. Incluso puedes escuchar el so you can fondo. generate an avatar of yourself, um, move your hands, move move your body, change your language, um, use different tone, use your tone of voice, and it's flawlessly going to track, translate, and lip sync your video with any input text. No more words can describe this. Uh, I'm very curious to see the use cases for this. It's interesting and the amount of content people can put out without actually even having to make the content is going to be just crazy. Amazon and Anthropic are back in the news. Amazon has invested another $2.75 billion in Anthropic. It is allegedly the largest investment in company history. It just shows how important this AI race is to all the top businesses. Everyone should really take note of that. Anthropic is the maker of Claude 3, which has recently just taken the LLM crown away for, from ChatGPT. Right here shows where Claude is, thanks to uh, Nick Dobos. You can see all of these things are circled in. Haiku is their lowest um, grade model. Claude 3 Opus is their highest grade model, and it is, is doing better than uh, GPT-4. And it's pretty important to understand that. And these LLMs are what you're able to talk to and get, uh, get news, get thoughts, brainstorm with. I will leave a link to this article in my description going more in depth about how it outranks Chad GPT. But you should take note of it because it's it's pretty crazy to think that these just keep one-upping each other. Airtable has thrown its name into the AI ring with new AI tools to help make your office workflows even more efficient. They have had AI for a while now, but some of the new features seem pretty great. One of which allows their AI to integrate with an individual's organization data and workflows directly. They want to make it much easier for the non-technical person. Airtable has automations built in to allow for faster management of tasks, as well as summarization of conversations from Slack and even writing formulas in their databases. Their goal is to maintain human-centric approaches while building these new technical uh, workflows. We'll see how this advances because, uh, you know, obviously I'm very into Notion, Google Docs and Microsoft Copilot. All of these are doing similar things. It was about time Airtable added some of these features that all of their competitors are. So it's gonna be hard to stay up to date if you are a smaller company with some of these big ones that are throwing all of the money towards these new tools. Leonardo has introduced a new tool which allows you to generate transparent PNGs. This could be good for graphics, for print, or offline like stickers or t-shirts, right? 2D game assets. Even if you're creating graphic designs for map paintings, if you want a 2D image to just be placed or integrated inside, you can literally just like, like make icons. You can do whatever it is you want, create characters, and everything is done on the, the transparent background. Let's just take a look at this. Like, look at this. You could just create the thing that you need and use it anywhere that you would like. And things like this uh, weren't 
available to uh, many people. And, and you could use these tools for free, I believe. So check it out. I'm gonna leave the, the tool in the description below. So all of these you could just make on transparent backgrounds, right? Right here, you can like make this image and input it and like basically composite it into your image. Like if you see this right here, how you click on transparency right there, and then it allows it to just give it a transparent background. It's pretty, it's pretty impressive. The amount you can do with this in your graphic design process is, is incredible. Uh, yes, and, and you don't really need to know the tools of Photoshop anymore. Let's talk about a huge app for sports via Vision Pro by Immersive IO. Check out how you might be able to watch soccer or football in the future. Look at this. You basically are watching the game and you are able to see the field in front of you and how people are running around on the field. This is literally taken from the, the video, right? It's similar to the Formula One piece that, uh, that I showed a little bit ago where you literally can watch the race in front of you while having the screen up. It's nuts. We are gonna be able to watch content in such unique ways. It's incredible. Now mark your calendars for June 10th, which is going to be Apple's WWDC Developers Conference 2024. This is where we will probably hear all about AI plan from Apple and even more updates I hear are coming for the Vision Pro. I'm sure they're just gonna be updating that quickly uh, as they're trying to compete with other products like MetaQuest or Magic Leap or these other glasses that are coming out, all of which are really exciting. Will they do what they usually do? Come to the party late, but define the market going forward? We now know the date that we're gonna find out. Okay, tell me about it, sweetie. So, Toto was standing by the window, staring at me in bed. Then, all of a sudden, he jumped out the window, and I ran over to see where he went. Wow, that sounds like a cartoon. No, it was like real life, and we were skydiving. And then I jumped after him. You did what? It's okay, Mom, we had parachutes. What color were the parachutes? All sorts of colors and there were LTX Studio launched this week with a huge launch event. I'm gonna leave a link to this video in the description, but they partnered with Oscar nominated director Ari Fullman to demonstrate how you can use it. While I don't think the quality is as good as some of their competitors, the fact that they have brought everything under one roof and it's operational is a huge achievement. First to the line, first to market will mean something, even if the other bigger players are very close behind. Now, Korea's real-time image generation is getting even much better. So if you look right here, it's a Van Gogh Ting, uh, a Van Gogh Provincial Farmhouse under Starry Nights. So here's the moon, it's represented by this circle and here's the square to represent buildings. If I move the moon, you'll see that it changes the picture. If I move this square, it changes the, the picture as well. So what's really neat about that is I can literally do this or I can um, say a uh, frog on a river looking for his next cricket meal. And then if I start like, see that's the, that's the circle. If I kind of make this smaller, it's gonna represent something else. If I make this smaller, you can start bringing in different things um, to really, to really kind of hone in on like, okay, that's the frog. Uh, it's, it's kind of neat. And then I could come in here and paint something. And then I can make it, that's a cartoon. This is CGI. This is conceptual. This is a photo. And this is a quick enhance. It upscales the image for me. It's just pretty neat. The things that you can do with these tools, right? <laughs> Now this is Bezzy 3D and it's it's going to make such a shift in game design and animation and all sorts of things. You're gonna be able to prompt as you've seen and create these 3D 
characters or these 3D assets that you can use in gameplay. And like once you start getting into AR, so many assets are going to be needed. So you're going to be, you're going to want to say, hey, I want this over there. I want that over there. And it's going to be able to generate. These tools are just getting crazy and they're going to be one after another after another. So trying to keep up with them is, is a full-time job, I can tell you. Now check this out. This is a robot that you can actually um, power with your iPhone. You literally put your iPhone in onto the robot and it now can recognize face, it could recognize objects on the table, it sees the orange, it sees the cup, and it can actually interact with your world now. For instance, you could see it could, it, this, is, this is actually used as a charging station, you can play with it, it's nudging, it's nudging the orange off the table, it's pretty cool, it could even take, it could play games. This is a pretty cool little fun toy, a companion that you could put on your desk. I don't know what the actual use case for it would be, but it looks like a lot of fun. There is so much more news that I could probably tell you about, but uh, I'm gonna leave you with that. So sign up for the newsletter going out on Tuesday this week and I'll probably put some more uh, tidbits in there. Thanks again, check out my AI toolbox. Please like and subscribe to the channel and I will keep these coming to you every week and I'm excited to show you more tools. I'm sure April's gonna be as crazy as March was, so just tune in and I will see you next time.